Hello guys, in this episode, we're gonna learn the freaking amazing detail. We're gonna take this photo, turn it into this. This is a retouching in Lightroom, and then we're gonna add some extra details. This is the final result. And I will show you how to do this, so stick with me. Hello. My name is Sergio Mali and welcome to episode 26 of my Photography Lightroom and Photoshop Tips. Last week, I showed you how to take these three raw files and turn it into this selective black and white photo of New York with, you know, the respect and the lens distortion totally corrected. This week, I'm going to show you what we call the freaking amazing detail. It's a technique that was developed by a German retoucher called Calvin Hollywood who is an amazing teacher. Um, and he shows his technique of how to take a photo. This is the original photo, uh, not retouched. This is the photo that has been just retouched in Lightroom. This is the photo with the freaking amazing detail. It's an amazing technique and you will see it can give this extra HDR, this extra detail to your photo. So let me show you how we do this. All right, so this is how this tutorial is going to go. First, let's start off and do the usual retouching in Lightroom. So this is a night photo. Night photo are very saturated. This is the row which is untouched. So if you follow my podcast, you know my usual formula. I'm going to open up the shadows and I'm going to turn down the highlights. All right, I'm going to press the Option key and I'm going to put the whites to the right until I see some spots. And then I'm going to do the opposite with the blacks to the left until you see these spots. I invite you, if you're not familiar with this technique, to check out my regular podcast, uh, like past episodes where I really explain why I do that. Okay, the purpose of that tutorial is more what we're going to do later on in Photoshop. Okay, next, uh, what I can do is um, I'm going to take the crop tool, take the angle tool. Uh, this is not very straight, so I'm going to guess that the horizontal line is about here okay i'm gonna make this a, a bit less of a sky press enter so this is yeah this is better cropping um the white balance i'm gonna put on shade to get a bit warmer tones uh, it's a bit too much so i'm maybe gonna go back a little bit it's a bit too much warm tones okay and i'm gonna put the um i'm gonna make a filter over the top here's the top part here and i'm gonna minus the exposure uh yeah so it's on a gradient so that you know we get a better feeling i'm gonna maybe put a bit more blue you know by getting the temperature more in the sky something like that okay i have a little spot here so i can use a spot healing tool now again i'm going very fast because it's not a lightroom tutorial it's a photoshop tutorial but i wanted to show you from the start okay so now i've done this i'm gonna boost the clarity and uh, you know and the exposure a little bit and maybe the contrast and just to finish off i'm going to put some sharpening like 72 uh, noise reduction i have almost no noise so i go to 10 lens correction i'm going to enable the lens correction um all right and i'm going to do some serious vignetting okay last but not least i just want to check the camera calibration see what uh Adobe Landscape is going to do for that photo. If it's going to do any good, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. I can increase the contrast. Okay, so now I've got my night photo. And let me show you, let me press T because I've got my tools here. Um, and let me show you here the before and after. That's the before and that's the after. Okay, and that's, yeah, that's the before and that's the after. That's zoomed in. Okay, let me go back. Um, all right, I'm going to go back in grid mode. Oh, sorry, in full screen mode. Okay, so yeah, major change. I'm sorry. Okay, major, major change. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click. I'm going to edit it in Photoshop CS6. Okay, and then I will show you how to do a technique. Uh, this, this is photo open. I'll show you why. A technique from this um, retoucher called Calvin Hollywood, an incredible, incredible Photoshop retoucher. 
And I've learned a lot from following his tutorials and I really encourage you to do so. And this technique he became very famous for is called the freaking amazing detail technique. So um, this is how it goes. I'm first going to do it like this and I'm going to show you how to make an action on it and use it on other photos. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, uh, Command J twice to create two copies of this photo. These two copies I select and I drag and drop into a folder, a group. So now I have a group with these two layers. That group I'm going to call FAD, freaking amazing detail. All right. Now, here is the trick. It's a bit complex, so follow this. The group I'm going to put into an overlay mode. All right. The first photo of that group, I'm going to invert it by pressing Command I or Control I on the Windows. That's going to invert the photo. And that inverted photo, I'm going to put into Vivid Light. So I repeat, I'll do it again. So the group itself is in overlay mode. The first photo is inverted with Command I or Control I on Windows and is put into Vivid Light. Once you've done that, you just have to get that photo uh, converted to a smart object. That's very important. And then we can do the magic. We can go to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. All right. Now check this out. Uh, now the value I usually start off around, yeah, threshold at 15 and radius at 20. But as it's a smart object, we can change as much as we want. So I press OK. And check this out. This is going to do some freaking amazing detail. Let me zoom in and look before the group freaking amazing detail, after the group freaking amazing detail. Check how much, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but look in the, in the clouds. Now, okay. Now, if you want to make it stronger, then you can just double click here on the surface blur because it's a smart object. Let me put the threshold, for example, at um, 42, which is exaggerated, but you can, so you, you get the concept of the, of the smart object. I'm, I'm going to press OK and it's going to recalculate everything. Now, look how it got like totally HDR and totally crazy. Okay, before, after, way too much. So if you want to go back, I can just get the threshold uh, back to, uh, let's say 10. And you can, you know, check around threshold 10, radius, you can make it bigger or smaller. Check out what works best on your photo. But that's the whole point of uh, smart filters and surface blur, you know, that you can change it as much as you want. So this is a very light value. I put 10 now, check it out before the freaking amazing detail, after. You know, but you still get all these details to come up, you know, I, I really love that. Okay, now I'm going to delete that and I'm going to start off again, but this time with uh, an action. So let me take the action panel. I'm going to create, you see here, I have a group of action called surge. You can create a group of action here, but I've already created one. And in that group of action, you don't need to do that, but it's just for organizing purposes. I'm going to create a new action that I'm going to call FAD and I'm going to click on a record. I'm going to put this away and I'm going to drag and drop this background copy layer and I'm going to call this layer, I'm going to call it FAD1. The reason I'm calling this and this is important when you do your action is because you make sure there's two things you need to make sure for this action to work. First thing, first thing you need to make sure that the the, the layer that you're going to duplicate is really a layer that has everything that's you know taken into account so far. You know, it's like that layer is like a merge layer. It's got it's really like a final touch. You know, like this one. You know, it's a full layer. Uh, it's not like you know a curve or anything. You know, it's uh, it's taken into account all we've done so far. So I created this one layer. I'm going to duplicate this one with Command J or Control J on Windows. Take both layers, put them into a group. That group I'm going to call FAD for freaking amazing detail. I'm going to take the first, oh, the group I'm going to put into overlay. The first photo I'm going to invert it with Command I or Control I on Windows. And then I'm going to put it into Vivid Light. Okay. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert it to Smart Object. All right. And now I do the magic filter, blur. Surface Blur, I'm going to go for a threshold of 14, 20, that's perfect, that's strong enough for something to be seen. Okay, and once this is done, 
I'm even going to go back here and create a mask on the whole group and close my group. Okay, and now I can close my action. All right, so now I'm done. Now I've got an action. It's called FAD and it's going to redo in a few seconds all we've done so far. So check this out. Before, after. What a change. What a change. Now I think it's too strong, for example, in the sky. So I created a mask, an empty mask. I could just can take the black color, B for brush, opacity 100%, and I can just brush out the effect in the sky. So that, you know, you have this sort of blurry sky from the long exposure and the highly detailed. I don't like on the water what it does also, so I'm going to take it out. And I'm just going to leave it on the bridge, you know, and it can be interesting. You know, that's one use of it. But now we've got an action. So, for example, let me take this photo and I'm going to take my action panel back and I'm going to just press play and check it out. It's going to do the whole magic thing. Here we are, you know, before, after. See how we got more details over here? Now, it doesn't work good on the water. Uh, we need to put a mask there, but you get the concept. It's just to show you the action. Uh, let me show you, for example, on the portrait, you know. I take my action panel back, and I'm just going to press play again. Okay, put it put it aside. Now it's, it's, now it's working. And uh, it, it can work very good also on, um, on portraits. Okay, here you go. Check it out. Before, after. That's a bit too strong, but you know, if you want to go for this HDR look, you know, and then you can just use the mask to decide, maybe just, you know, you can even lower the opacity of the group to make the effect less stronger, or you can change the surface blur, uh, you know, strengths directly on, on the settings, you know. But it's, it's good to have it, oops, sorry. It's good to have it as an action because you can just test it on the photo real fast to see if it's going to give something or not. So, yeah, so thanks to Calvin Hollywood for this amazing trick. And let's go back to the studio. Okay, just before we go back to the studio, I just want to show you that uh, if you go on my website, photoshirts.com slash apps, you will see that I've got all my training apps here. And in January, I have got a special January discount that goes on for about two weeks where you can get minus 30% on all the Photoshop, Lightroom, or all Photoshop training. I invite you to check it out. Okay, guys. So I hope you like that tutorial. So this week's inspiration is, of course, Kelvin Hollywood from Germany. Uh, check out his website that you can see here. He's got English tutorial. He's got English courses that you can buy. I've done a few. They are amazing. I invite you to check him out. Okay, as usual, I'm asking for your help. If you can help me promote this podcast by sharing it on Google+, Plus or on YouTube, or leaving comments, or liking it, it helps getting it known. And now I've done 26 episodes and I'm sure it can help out a lot of photographers. So thank you for your help and I'll see you next week.